to uh, welcome our guest and say a few words. Thank you, Professor. Uh, it's really wonderful to see people turn out for this morning because I think that the presentation that's going to be made in a few minutes will be very helpful to you. How many of you are students? Well, there we go, on the front row. So you'll be learning about some things that not only can you use in your own studies, but I think that you'll be able to use your student teaching too and share with your students. So uh, it's a win-win situation. I'm glad to see you turn out at 8.30 in the morning. Um, I wanted to say just a word about Secretary of State Ralph Mollis. I consider him to be a friend. He is a member of the Portuguese community, which I consider to be very important at Rhode Island College. And in terms of his background, he has a wonderful background, I think, as a politician for us because he's been um, identified with really um, part, parts of our campus very tightly because he was president of the town council in North Providence. How many of you know that part of our campus is located in North Providence? Yeah, that's right. We straddle Providence and North Providence. And then he went on from being president of town council to become mayor of Providence. And then in 2006, the voters voted uh, for him to become Secretary of State. And he's been Secretary of State ever since then. And has done some really wonderful things in terms of increasing uh, numbers of voters registered in Rhode Island and working with the business community in terms of some of the reporting regulations, easing those up because, of course, we really want to have as many businesses here in Rhode Island as we can. So I'm just delighted to welcome all of you to welcome Secretary of State Mollis, and to welcome all of his staff, um, one of whom is an alum of the college, Raina Smith. Raina, do you want to wave? <laughs> and, uh, and we have another person who's a student at Rhode Island College who's here representing WPRO Radio today, Andrew Augustus. Andrew? Yeah, so aren't we lucky? Uh, Rick is really out there, and, and I think this is uh, just one more wonderful occasion on campus that helps us to promote education. So thank you very much. Welcome. We look forward to your remarks. Thank you, Carla. And it, the, the friendship is definitely mutual. So she's doing a wonderful, wonderful job here at one of the Freeman Colleges in Rhode Island. My only regret is that when I left the mayor's office in 2006 to run for Secretary of State, I love what I do, because that was just before uh, the doctor became president. We never got a chance to work together as mayor and president, which I wish we did, because uh, when I drove up to the campus, I actually was trying to think of the last time I was here. Because it seems like the progress that I have made is just incredible. And so we were talking, and I'm saying, you know, it's been such a long time that I've been here, the progress is incredible. And I realized I was here in 2012 in the presidential primary, so the progress has only been the last year and a half. And it's just amazing what's going on. So kudos and congratulations to all you doing here. I know we have a lot of members of the administration here around the college, and thank you for all you do, and Dr. Blankenship, for having us here. Um, obviously, we hire around the college graduates. Although I saw a lot of hands go up as teachers, and that's real good. I'm glad to hear that, and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, I, I don't want to uh, miss anyone, but I do want to just mention Joanne Delachandra, who just walked in uh, as part of your athletic department administration, but Joanne and I worked together when I was mayor of the Bronx also, so great to see you talking to Joanne. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, we have members of my staff here, and again, what you're about to see is really the hard work that they put together. Uh, they're going to talk for a little while. But most importantly, I want to just welcome all of you for a couple of reasons. First, I love history. And I have to think that I'm talking to students who also have that love for history. Second, I give you a lot of credit at 8.30 in the morning to be here and join us, believe me. It was a while ago that I graduated from college, but I know that I never look forward to that 8.30 a.m. class. So thank you for being here. It means a lot. And for those of you who raise your hands and you're going to be student teaching, or you're going to be teaching, that's excellent. I think this is a tool that truly will be beneficial to you. I mean, we developed this for journalists, for historians, for educators, for researchers, for individuals who want to know what's going on, who can find about the history of Rhode Island that's in our Westminster Street office and find it's tied to American democracy. Now, I know I'm preaching to the choir when I say this, but Rhode Island has a real rich history. And our tie into our American history is incredible. All of that history, or most of that history, is actually at our archives. I think I know the answer, but I'm ask anyone. Who here has actually been to our archives? Glad to see that. That's excellent. I encourage you to do that. To the students, free pocket for all that. Um, so I encourage you to stop by. I love going there. If you love history, it's an amazing place. Uh, when I became, when I got to talk to 2007, one of my goals was to truly promote, preserve, and protect the history of Rhode And we, I actually took a checklist of the things I promised in 2007. 
seven so I can check them off before I leave the lunchtime woman. And one of the things that I never get to check off, but I'm not done yet, is to bring the history of the archives out to a place that's easy for people to visit, almost like a museum, something we really wanted to do. We made some strides. We have history at the archives that dates back to 1638, two years after Roger Williams found the province. 1638. Our, one of our most amazing documents, I think, is our royal child. So you talk about Rhode Island history, and I, mean, really, I didn't learn enough about this in high school. I wish I did. I went to college outside of Rhode Island. But in high school, you'd think we'd learn about Rhode Island history, and we never did. Rhode Island was the first region territory to actually get religious freedom, to get protection from its neighbors, to get rights that no one else ever had before in the modern that world. And that was in 1663. We still have that document. And that document was actually in a display case for many, many years in the State House. Although we never got to open up that museum, we did get a chance to move the charter to now a, a charter room. So second to the archives, I would encourage you to visit the State House, a lot of history there. But now we have a charter room where there's a, now we display our charter and some amazing history. We have a copy of the Declaration of Independence. We have letters to and from George Washington, John Hancock, Thomas Jefferson. We have letters from George Washington actually hanging in our office. We walk by it as if it's commonplace, as if I wrote the letter. It's amazing. I mean, we just take it for granted. And so one of the things we want to do is take, we know people need to research this, family history. Of course, a lot of that, a lot of that, the census data is all at the archives. People who are doing this research need to find a way to find out, number one, do we have it? And number two, how can you see it? Some things you see online, some things you'll have to go visit, but of course, at least you can find out that we have it. We actually have millions of documents at the archives. Now, I want to let you know that when I, we actually did a press release and acknowledged this, this is the official kickoff of our, of our State Archives online catalog. And I saw all the bullet points in the notes, and I was going over and I saw millions of documents. And I said, somebody needs to call one of our archivists. And when I made a mistake, I think there should be thousands of documents. And she called back and said, no, it's millions of documents. Literally. So we don't have everything online just yet. Um, we have a lot of images, a lot of documents, a lot of important historical records that are online. And our goal is to bring this information to the home, to the researcher, to the classroom. Uh, I really want to stress that. If you're going to be teaching, I hope and have to think this is going to be an incredible tool for you to be able to talk to your students. Because as with anyone, if you have an image to relate to, it's a lot easier to teach than to have it. And so our goal is to let you know what we have in our archives and also let you be able to show them to your students, our researchers, historians, etc. And so that's why we picked Rhode Island College and all of you kick this off. And we've had so we got a great article in the Providence Journal, a um, nice editorial which actually um, raved about this archive online catalog. And it's nice to see that and the fact that we are here around the college and maybe. So before we do a little practice and a little bit of demonstration, I'm gonna want you to follow through with us also and also want to open up your questions and see what you think we can help you. As I was telling a few people, some of our best ideas are other people's ideas. So as you're going through if you think there's a way that you can better serve you can let us know. Before we do that, I just want to turn it over to one of the many people who really was instrumental in getting this done. You can only imagine the work it takes to catalog all of these images and documents and actually get some online. And that's our state archives.